The Key Influencers Visual is a new visualization in Power BI that helps you understand what drives a metric you're interested in. It is an AI visualization, which means it has some intelligence built into it that runs behind the scenes to help surface insights. To start off with, the Key Influencers Visual requires a field to analyze. Currently, this is limited to categorical fields, and so aggregates and measures cannot be used. In this scenario, I'm a product manager who's interested in looking at some data about customers who are using our cloud service. I have information about what kinds of reviews they posted, whether they gave us a high or low rating, as well as a bunch of other information about them, such as where they're based, what kind of subscription do they have, and whether they have support tickets open with us. Going back to the visual, I would like to analyze what drives customers to give us low scores. So I'm going to drag the rating column into the field well. Once the visual renders, I can tailor the question I want to focus on. In this case, I want to see what influences a customer to give us a low score. I then need to provide the visualization with some factors that might have an impact on my customer rating. I'm going to, for example, use where the customer is based, what kind of role do they have in their organization, what kind of subscription do they have, what's their company size, and what kind of theme did they post about with respect to their review. And you'll notice every time I drag one of these factors in, the visual actually reruns the analysis behind the scenes and re-ranks all the factors. When we first dragged country in, France was the top influencer, but after choosing a number of other factors, it looks like whether someone's role as a consumer within the organization is now the top factor. So what does it mean for a consumer to be a key influencer? Well, if someone is a consumer of our cloud service, the likelihood of them giving us a low rating is 2.57 times higher than if they're an administrator or a publisher. So let's dissect that a little bit. If we look at the graph on the right-hand side, we can see that 14.9% of consumers give us low ratings. If we look at the average of all other roles, that number is 5.78%. The difference between these two numbers gives us our likelihood of 2.57 times. The key influencers visualization also takes into consideration the number of data points when determining whether a field is an influencer or not. For example, if we look at the org variable in a little bit more detail, we can see that the administrator role also has quite a high proportion of low ratings, 13.42%. Nevertheless, if we look at the visual, we can see that the administrator is not coming up as a key influencer. If we go ahead and plot the rating and the role in org by the rating count, we can see that the count of administrators, both in terms of low ratings and high ratings, it's much lower than the numbers for consumers. And so the visualization did not deem it to have enough weight to be considered an influencer. We're also able to compare different types of variables together and rank them alongside each other. For example, the second influencer is theme being usability. If someone posts a review alongside their rating to do with usability, we can see that almost 29% of ratings are low, compared to about 11% for all other themes. Furthermore, we can also filter this data to only show us the types of themes that are driving ratings to be low. Selecting this box gives us the four themes we should be focusing on if we care about low ratings. I might be interested in seeing whether the key drivers for large enterprises differ from the overall population. What I can do is drag company size onto the canvas and change this into a slicer. Because the visual is dynamic, I can just select customers who work at companies with over 50,000 employees and the visual reruns its analysis. Here we can see that consumers are no longer the key influencer and in fact they don't appear on this list at all. The top influencer now is reviews written about security. So maybe there are some issues facing large enterprises when it comes to security features I should be addressing. The key influencers visual is also able to use continuous fields as explanatory factors. For example, we can look at tenure, which is how long the customer has been with us. Here, we can see that tenure shows up as a key influencer. What this tells us is that when tenure increases, the likelihood of a low rating also increases, which means that the customers who have been with us longer are in fact giving us lower ratings.
Specifically, we look at the standard deviation of tenure. So this is saying that if we were to increment tenure by 13 months, on average, we see that the likelihood of receiving a low rating increases by 1.23 times. The scatter plot on the right hand side plus the average percentage of low ratings for each value of tenure and includes a trend line to highlight the slope. Finally, it is also possible to bring in measures and aggregates as explanatory factors. It is important to note, though, that these measures and aggregates will be evaluated at the table level of the analyze metric. So what does that mean? If we look at our analyze metric, which is rating, this is defined at a customer level. Every customer can either give a high rating or a low rating. This means that if we bring in measures or aggregates, they need to become features of a customer and defined at the customer level. So let's look at an example. Imagine we wanted to see if the number of support tickets that a customer has impacts their likelihood of giving us a low or high rating. A customer can have no support tickets, one support ticket, or many support tickets. If we jump back to the visual, what we want to do is essentially look at the count of the support ticket ID. If we drag this in, we can see this has already been aggregated to a count. But if I try to select don't summarize, I would get the following error. This is because the support ticket ID is now defined at a more granular level than the customer. So in order for this to work, we need to be using some sort of aggregation. In this case, count is the one that makes sense for me. And indeed, we can see that when the count of support tickets goes up, the likelihood of receiving a low rating increases, which intuitively makes sense. If the customer has a lot of support tickets with us, it is reasonable to say they're not gonna be giving us high ratings. The left-hand analysis is the same as what we see for continuous factors. We look at the standard deviation of support tickets, in this case that is three. So every time we see an increment of three support tickets, on average, the likelihood of receiving a low rating increases by 5.5 times. The right-hand side groups the measure by the analyze factor, in this case rating. So we can see what the average number of support tickets looks like for high ratings, and what the average support ticket looks like for low ratings. So far, we were able to look at one factor at a time to see what are the top key influencers for customers giving us low ratings. But we also want to be able to look at multiple factors at a time, specifically which segments of customers are likely to give us low ratings. For this sort of analysis, we can jump into the top segments tab. We can see that the visualization has found us a total of six segments. The height of the bubble represents what proportion of that segment has low ratings. The size of the bubble represents how many customers we have in a particular segment. If we select segment one, in this particular segment, we can see that we have customers who are not publishers, they have four support tickets or more with us, and they have been our customer for over 29 months. 74% of these customers give us a low rating. And this is 63 percentage points higher than the average, which is highlighted here, and it is 11.7%. Furthermore, this segment contains 2.2% of my data, which is about 1,000 data points. And so we can see this represents a pretty addressable portion of the population. If I want to explore the other segments, I can click through them, and I can always go back to the high-level view over here.